Hello, my name is Lisa Krieger and this is the final uh, project presentation for Group 13 titled Reclamation and Mitigation of New Bexton Mine. The management team goal is to reclaim and restore the land within and around New Bexton Mine in order to create a connection to surrounding conservation areas that are used for recreation, hunting, and non-timber forest products extraction. The team designed a plan for mitigation of the former heap leach pad the toxic dust potential, and to promote native vegetation establishment. The vegetation within the mine area is typical of the Rocky Mountain montane zone, which ranges from 5,600 to 9,500 feet. The dominant tree species throughout the assessment area are Ponderosa pine and Douglas fir. Common shrubs are the dry land shrubs, such as Gamble oak and mountain mahogany. Common species of grass in this area include prairie june grass, western wheatgrass, little blue stem, and cheatgrass. As elevation and moisture availability increase, ponderosa pine and mixed conifer woodlands with herbaceous and shrub understory are common. North-facing slopes are characterized by denser stands of ponderosa and mixed conifer forest dominated by Douglas fir. The climate for the area is semi-arid with low humidity, low annual precipitation, high daytime temperatures, and low nighttime temperatures is heavily influenced by Chinook winds which dry up snow and moisture, has mild to moderate winters and dry summers, and abrupt weather changes are experienced such as when there is hail on a summer day. The soil survey has an approximate depth of 10 to 20 inches of stony sandy loam to very gravelly sandy loam before reaching weathered bedrock and is well drained with a high runoff class. It experiences high loss by leaching because of snow melt from neighboring mountains, a gain of nutrients from weathering rock of the surrounding mountains, and a high uptake of nutrients due to large amount of vegetation in the foothills. Most front range soils exhibit an alkaline pH. Site background and assessment for New Bexton Mine. It's a former mineral extraction mine with existing drained ponds that have left behind sediment containing high levels of heavy metals, including arsenic, cadmium, lead, and zinc. There's an existing heap leach pad which leaks cyanide into the soil. And so uh, pressing issues to address, there's creeks running through the mining area into a large river. And there's an agricultural area downstream. Also there's sediment from heavy metals that become airborne and there's a playground yard for a school 10 miles downwind. Challenges in mitigation are uh, in isolating and containing the potentially toxic parts of the waste. And this is because there are high winds, dry climate, sloping, and increased drainage and runoff. And so the first line of defense is to prevent the toxic materials from mixing with air and water. There are four main objectives of this restoration plan. The first objective is to reduce the amount of heavy metal loading through dust settling off-site and through sedimentation on on-site creeks. Dust and sediment samples should show metal loads below EPA regulatory levels. The second objective is to restore the natural hydrology of the site. No rilling or erosional gully should be present, and the site should be reworked to achieve a natural contour, blending in with the surrounding topography. The third objective is to prepare a seed bed that can support vegetation. Soil tests from below the heap leach pile should show no residual cyanide. Bulk density will be reduced and organic matter content will be increased. The fourth objective is to restore native perennial vegetation to the site and to manage for invasive weeds. Vegetation should reach 70% of surrounding undisturbed areas within two growing seasons. No list A weed species will be present. Soil is a basis for a healthy ecosystem. There are many challenges present with the reclamation of this site due to the soil. Soils have a very large function and play an important role in an ecosystem. This area's soil have been contaminated with heavy metals that include arsenic, cadmium, lead, and zinc. The site also has a heap leach pad that contains residual cyanide. In order to reclaim the site, we will use a variety of techniques that include soil grading, capping, and planting. In order to create a better environment for plants to establish and mitigate the runoff into the nearby creek, we will use soil capping on the tailings pond. In order to do so, we will add four feet of growth media. The first two feet will be a clay layer in order to create a barrier and then one foot of a gra sand gravel layer for drainage. 
Finally, the last foot will be topsoil, perfect for plant establishment. Along with the added soil and plants, we will use the help of bacteria. These bacteria include biodegradive bacteria, plant growth promoting bacteria, and bacteria that facilitate phytoremediation by other means. After the soil capping, there will be seeding of chosen plants that are helpful for phytoremediation. In order to reclaim the heap leach pad, we will first need to rinse the soil. There are multiple ways to rinse the soil that is within the heap leach pad. The heap may be rinsed with fresh water or with recycled rinse water that has been treated to ensure there is little cyanide. The rinse medium may or may not contain other chemicals to help get rid of the cyanide present on the site. Some of the solutions that may be added to the medium are rinses that include alkaline chlorination and sulfur dioxide processes. After the soil is rinsed, there may be a sulfur-based fertilizer added to the soil to help balance the pH of the soil. After this, we will add topsoil along with bacteria to the area and broadcast seed with a straw mulch layer to help mitigate wind erosion and help plant establishment. Finally, for the open pit, we will be tilling or ripping the soil to help with the soil compaction and its slope. After this, we will once again broadcast seed and use our bacteria to promote plant growth in the area. After the initial site reclamation is finished, there will be monitoring of the soil to ensure that the actions being took will be successful. We have five priority locations for vegetation at the site. First is the open pit. Second is currently vegetation, vegetated areas, grassland, forest, or otherwise. Creek to river, heap leach pad, and the tailings pond. Six species for revegetation. Slender wheatgrass, it's a metallophyte, and he stands increase in size through vigorous tilling. It's a fast growing plant that can establish quickly on critical sites. And the plants tend to be short-lived, three to four years. It's important because it will give other plants a chance to establish afterwards. Um, that way it doesn't become a dominant site, a dominant uh, species over time, um, just on the short term. Um, it has a high tolerance for heavy metals and cyanide uh, in BLM studies when compared to other perennial grasses. Woods Rose is another metallophyte. Uh, it produces rhizomes, regenerates quickly, can be used to stabilize road cuts, mine spoils, and stream banks. So it's a good candidate for erosion control. Um, and it's also an important food source for wildlife. Blue bunch wheatgrass, Sideragnaria speculum, is another metallophyte. Extensive root system, good seedling vigor, drought tolerant, adapted to stabilization of disturbed soil, and it's long lived. This is important um, for the sequestration of these uh, heavy metals at the site. Big bluegrass uh, is another metallophyte. It's, also, it's drought tolerant, moderately fire resistant. And once established, will compete well with cheatgrass. And it's very long lived. Again, that's going to be important for sequestering heavy metals. Western snowberry is a, also metallophyte. It forms dense colonies along ditches, streams, and floodplains. Um, so it's a good candidate for uh, colonizing a lot of, the, of these sites um, within the site. Rhizomes are very long and sparsely branched, typically grow to a depth of 14 inches. It's adapted to moderate drought conditions and is a cereal species that thrives after a disturbance. Um, and it will also create uh, some microenvironments for other species to take over afterward. Basin wild rye, metallophyte, uh, stabilizes disturbed so soils, uh, has a deep fibrous root system, so it's effective for the control of wind and water erosion, uh, so to mitigate for some of the dust problems at the site. It's drought tolerant, uh, and it's a pioneer species that thrives in disturbed locations. So the seeding methods, we have, we're going to have some drill seeding and broadcasts of a perennial grass mi mixture as well of basin wild rye, big bluegrass, slender wheatgrass, and blue bunch wheatgrass. No more than 20% slender wheatgrass because it's kind of a dominant species. That'd be a pioneer treatment on bare ground, and then a broadcast seeding of woods rose seed and western snowberry at riparian areas and areas with sparse grass cover. Long-term management uh, for the vegetation would be prescribed fire, noxious weed control, 
and assisted succession to a climax community reforestation. Our monitoring plan for soils will include pre-project sampling to determine baseline data, then three-month, six-month, and 12-month post-construction sampling will occur. Annual sampling will be performed after the first year until the restoration plan objectives are met. The success criteria for soil monitoring are 1. That soil samples taken at 0 to 10 cm show heavy metal contents below EPA regulatory levels. If this is not achieved after year 1, phytoremediating plants and or soil amendments will be added to the site. Second, the seedbed will show organic matter levels below baseline data and bulk density, excuse me, organic metal levels above baseline data and bulk density levels below. Soil amendments and additional ripping with a bulldozer to reduce compaction, assuming no successful revegetation, will occur after year one. Third, dust collected off-site will be sampled for heavy metals and will show loads below EPA regulatory levels. If this is not achieved after year one, phytoremediating plants and soil amendments will be introduced. Vegetation monitoring will begin two growing seasons after restoration activities have completed and will occur annually thereafter until the objectives are met. The success criteria for vegetation is to restore native perennial vegetation to 70% of surrounding undisturbed area, exclusive of undesirable weed species. Invasive weeds will be kept to less than 10% of total veget vegetative cover and no list A weed species will be present. Vegetation monitoring will be measured as percent cover estimated from transects. If success criteria is not met within two growing seasons, mechanical removal or additional herbicide application on weed species will be conducted and the site will either be reseeded or planted with nursery stock to aid in establishment.